Hi, and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at all the new features that were added to the book module in Lightroom 5. Now, I've already got this book laid out, and we are in the book module, so what I want to do first is add some page numbers. So using the page panel, I will just click to enable the page numbers, and then we can see that we can add these either to the top or bottom corner or to the middle of the top side or bottom. So in this case, as soon as I select an option, we can see those page numbers previewed. If I want to see them a little larger, I just need to use the keyboard shortcut Command R or Control R to see my double page spread. And sure enough, there they are. But what might happen is you might use a template, say, for example, on the first page that might just be text and or might be an index, and therefore you don't want to see the page number starting on that first page. Well, wherever you want the page numbering to start, all you need to do is right mouse click, and then you can say to start the page number on that page. So it doesn't always have to start on the initial page. So in this case, I'm actually going to right mouse click over here on the right hand side. Of course, on Mac, that would be control click. And I'm going to start my page numbering over here. And then let's move to the next spread, because I also want to show you that if you just didn't want the page number to appear on a single page, again, we'll right mouse click. And now we can just hide that page number. And by hiding it, we've just hidden it on that page the numbers still go sequentially. So it's as if there's a page two here, and of course the next page number would then be page three. All right, another added feature is the ability to go in and modify a custom template and then save that custom template. So let's double click on page nine here, and I want to change this template. I'm going to scroll down a bit, and let's select this template right here and apply it. But the problem is, is that the offset is a little bit too great between the caption text and the photograph. So I'm going to select both of these two photos, those two cells, and I'm going to come over here to my cell panel. I'm going to unlink all of the cell padding, and I'm just going to bring the bottom up a little bit, which is just going to move the photograph up a bit. Then I want to also select the text. So I'll select the first one, and then again, holding down the Shift key, I'll select the second photo text, and I'm going to change the offset. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit, maybe to seven or six, maybe even more, maybe down to five. All right, so I've made some changes to a template, and now I want to save these. Again, we're going to use the right mouse click, or you can use control click on Mac, and I'm going to save this as a custom page. Now, as soon as I save this as a custom page, when we go up to our page panel, it now appears under a custom pages area. So let's go ahead and view our entire book. I'll use Command E or Control E in order to see multiple pages, and then I'll just select all of the pages that I want to apply this custom page to. So by simply selecting them and then using either the drop down menu here on the page panel or using the downward pointing arrow right here, I can move to the custom pages area and then I can click to select that custom page and it automatically is applied to all of those pages that I had selected. I just want to change one more page here to kind of show you the power of these custom pages. Let's go ahead and zoom in just to see this one page, and I'll use the page picker here. And we'll just go to one photo. So I will select this first template, which basically just says one photo per page. And of course, I can right mouse click and I can zoom the photo to fill the page, but I might not want to do that. So I'll turn that off for now. I just want to show you how flexible Lightroom can be. Because when you use a template like this, even though you're seeing your image in the center, if you go to the cell area and you decide that you want to move this image, you can really move it anywhere on the page. If I just unlink them all, look, I can move the slider here for the left and move the image over to the right, or I could move the right slider, which would bring it over to the left. I can change the distance from the top of the page, or I can change the distance from the bottom of the page. So really, you have quite a bit of flexibility with all of these different templates. And now that we're able to save those as custom templates, it's going to make our work much more efficient in the book module.
I'll just show you really quickly by going underneath the Lightroom menu to our preferences. Of course, on Windows, this would be under the Edit menu. And I'm going to go under the Presets area and show the Lightroom Presets folder. It opened it up exactly to the Lightroom Presets. We'll go ahead and scoot this out a bit, and we'll take a look at the layout templates. So here I've just created a single custom page, and if we look, there's a new folder called 7x7 Blurb, and inside of there is my custom template. The reason that I'm pointing this out is not only to show you where these custom templates live, but also to point out that they are specific to the settings that you have in the Book Settings panel. So let's return back to Lightroom and go to those Book Settings. So depending on the size of your book, when you create a custom template, the templates that you create for that size are the only ones that are going to display because really that only makes sense. They're a custom specific size for the choice that you made here. Now let's go back to the Page panel for a moment and just show you that this custom pages, it actually doesn't appear if you don't have any custom pages. If you wanted to delete the custom page, you just need to select it and then right mouse click on it and you can remove it from custom pages. Now, when I do this and I return back to that menu, you'll notice that because I have not defined any custom pages, I don't get that option there. All right, one of the other things that you might have noticed is when I position my cursor over any of these templates, I now get a little circle icon, and that circle icon is the same icon that we see in the library module when we're trying to add an image either to Quick Collection or to a regular collection. So by clicking on that icon here in the book module, that actually adds it to my favorites. And not only does it add it to my favorite, but that way when I'm just browsing through maybe the one photo per page templates, it allows me to quickly identify the ones that maybe I've used in the past or have added to those favorites. Three last things that I just want to mention. The first one, underneath the book setting, you'll notice that there's a new paper type. So there's a standard paper type. Now, this standard paper type isn't going to be as high a quality as the other papers, but it's a lot more economical. In addition, you'll notice that there is this option to add page text. We just wanted to make this a little bit more obvious that you could add page text to your images. So now simply clicking on that will actually give you the page text area so that you can start typing. And of course, it, it just opens up a small sliver, but you can type as much as you want in that page text area. So basically, instead of having to come to the text panel and then click on the page text to even see that you could enter text on a page, we've made that visible. So hopefully, more people will take advantage of that. And finally, if you wanted to pull information from the files, you'll notice here, for example, if I click on my photo text to activate it, I have a lot longer list here. So it used to be that the book module could only grab information like the caption and the title and the file name. Now you can see that we can actually get a lot more information, for example, the date or the equipment or the exposure of the image. So you don't have to type that in. If you select this from the list, Lightroom will automatically go out and grab that information from the metadata in the file. Excellent. There's a quick overview of all of the new features in Lightroom's book module. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for joining me.